this new video. In this new video, we're going to learn how System C works and how basically System C can manage concurrency. Basically, we want to answer the question why we are able to create a concurrent system and model that in software, which is basically a sequential process. So here I'm showing an example of a System C, a basic example that I'm going to post online. Here I've opened that contains three uh, system C files. One is called main, where you declare a clock, the reset. You always need an SC main in each of the designs. You see the clock, the reset signals. And then we have two basic blocks that we need to instantiate in this main fold. One is the basic and one is the main block that we want to simulate in the test bench. So here first we connect the basic module and the test bench together. We have now two statements. One is to start the simulation. We create a reset input uh, and then we set SC start to start the simulation. So basically we first generate a reset um, pulse and we start the simulation. So the test bench has two threads, concurrent threads. One is the send and one is the receive thread. These will be uh, executed concurrently. So in the send thread, we basically, the first part, it's a indefinite while loop and first, in the very first statement, we have the reset state, and then we have a wait cycle. Then we have the while, and it's an infinite while that sends data to the uh, basic uh, um, block that we want to simulate, and it has a wait, and it would do that for five times. In the receive uh, thread, we have here, we printing out when we are in this thread. It's in the first part of the, th of the thread, we have the reset state, and then we send the data. Right. And then in the basic uh, design, what we do is that we first print out where we are. We have a wait cycle, then an indefinite root while loop, and then we read the data, we add 10 to the data, and then we print the data out. We increment by one the counter, and then we write the data back so that the receive thread can get that data. And the important thing is the wait cycles. That is important because every time we have a wait, we write a wait, we're returning control to the scheduler, to move to the next thread. Right? So then here we have the defined parts of the different uh, processes. So we have the test bench with the two threads, the active and the positive clock edge, and this is the, the head of the basic component where we have one thread that basically adds the 10 to the data we sent. So the important thing is the weight. Uh, statement. Every time you have a wait segment, we're going to return control to the scheduler. So we say make, now we compile the three CPP files, main, test bench, basic, and basic. And you see it create the basic.exe file, the binary. Now we can execute that. And we see that where we are in which state. First, we say the update data. That's the way in the reset part of the different threads. Uh, then we're receiving thread, and then we're in the sending data thread, and we do that two times, right? So this is the first part of the different threads. Let's see, this is the basic thread. We said update data reset, right? And then you have the wait cycle, and in the wait cycle, we return control to the scheduler. This is the uh, system C library that we pre-compiled before, and that we include in the in the when we compile it, and the, and, um, and then we then once the reset state have been executed, then we move on to the main infinite loops, the while loops that are continuously being executed. And that's one of the main conditions of system C is that you the SC thread can only be executed once. If you leave the thread, it will never be re-executed. That's why we have infinite loops. And you see here how we're updating the values and how we send the value. We add by 10. Um, in, in the basic thread, and then we return the receiving thread returns the data, returns the data. Right. So this is how we basically model concurrency with the wait cycles and this infinite while loop. And the scheduler determines the order in which the different threads, C threads, will be executed. Right. So then we send data, we update the data by 10, and then we receive the data, we receive the data. Right. We receive the data. So what we can do now is the best thing is to play with the wait states and we can move the wait statements in the main thread. So we say make clean. Right? 
we can recompile again and re-simulate it to make sure that it works. Right. Again, we see the, the results here with the reset state. It's equal to zero, and then we execute the receive first. And it seems, and then updating data, receive, and so on. So this is basically the order of the different of uh, of the different process concurrent processes that are being executed in parallel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please drop me a line. I will upload the files online. Thank you for watching.